Hiya, and welcome back to Roads Yet Traveled, the game that teaches us that the best way to... <laughs> yeah. The game that teaches us that the best way to deal with something scary is to rotate 360 degrees and then run the other direction. Anyways, let's just hop right in. Trust me, in a fight between a 160 or so pound college student and a massive dog, I think I could call the winner. So, um, Haya. He looks worried. I guess it is concerning that I can understand them. I see it as beneficial for now, though. Maybe I can figure out some of this madness a bit faster this way. No way. No idea how I can get them to understand me, though. Maybe charades really is the best strategy I have to go with right now. Marrow manages to arrange his thoughts and continue. Now this may be a bit awkward after, well, everything, but I would appreciate if I could still finish my medical examination of you. If that's alright. Oh right, we were kind of in the middle of a doctor's appointment, weren't we? Well, this will do nothing for me, I'm sure. While this will do nothing for me, I'm sure the- I'm sure there are dogs here just begging to get this information. Doc probably included. I suppose it couldn't hurt. I nod and he lets out a small sigh. At least he seems grateful. It's nice he asked first. I wasn't even thinking about if I had a choice or not. The rest of the appointment was fairly routine. Well, mostly anyways. He checked my ears, my mouth, my eyes. Then there were some less than routine parts. Like when he tried to see if I had a tail. Or inspected my head and asked why my fur was so short. Or when he inspected my hands and tried to ins inspect my claws. It was nice feeling his hand, though. The pads aren't quite like skin, but they aren't as rough as, no as a normal dog's. I guess since they aren't on the ground getting beat up all the time. Their claws still freak me out a bit. As long as they aren't being brandished at me as a weapon, though, I think I'll be fine. Hiya! He continued to talk to himself throughout the examination. He's very diligent, I suppose. I wonder what he'll say about me in his write-up. I'm curious if they have anything like wherever I am, or anything at least similar to humans. Obviously nothing too close, considering their reactions, but maybe something genetically close. It's worth asking about, atop all the other questions I have stacking up. Coming back to reality, I notice there are only two tools left out of his bag. A roll of bandages, and oh, a large pointy looking device. Right, he did say he wanted to take some blood samples. I'm suddenly unsure if I should have allowed this examination to continue. Doc seems to have noticed the dip in my attitude. Or maybe the change in my heart rate. And put two and two together. Oh. This? I promise I'll make it as bearable as possible. But it would really help us out if we could get even the smallest sample from you. When we found out you were sentient, and not some naked creature running around, I stopped the emergency team from taking samples while you were unconscious. It felt wrong. Of course, now that does mean you have to be conscious while I take them, of course. I'm sorry. But I saw it as the only acceptable course of action. Wait. What? It's surprisingly thoughtful that he'd go out of his way for my well-being and rights n while, knowing little while knowing so little about me. But that's just it. I'm an unknown to them. Why go out of your way to do all that? Seems like an inconvenience for them, and maybe now me, as I stare down the needle. But I suppose he truly meant well by it. Thank you, Merowyn. Right. Well, before we deal with that, I'd like to change your bandages, if that's alright. He has no idea what I said. Oh well, soon enough, hopefully. I simply nod and let him redress my wounds. They don't look as bad as I thought they might. But I do see now that I have a few stitches on my arm. Actually, on closer inspection, the cuts look fused back together? Wonder if it'll leave a scar. Probably not. Ugh. I will have to talk to Maruk about this. It really did a number on you. After redressing my wounds, Doc gathers all his supplies and arranges the last few pieces needed for my little medical. Alright. Would you be okay if I were to try and take a sample of your blood? I promise I'll make it as manageable as possible. I'm an expert. Well, on my own species anyways. I can't help but laugh a bit. I really can't tell if he's trying to tell a joke. Or if it just came out that way. I definitely don't want to do this. But this saint has been so kind to me, I feel like he deserves it. I do hope he's an expert, though. 
I'd rather not get stabbed more than once. I lay out my arm for him, assuming that the act of taking blood is similar across our species. Probably a poor assumption, but this is the only way I know how to do it. He seems to catch on fine enough, though, taking some kind of clear liquid and swabbing down a small section of my arm with one giant finger. A disinfectant, I'd guess. I'm still worried about the prospect of using alien medicine on my human body, but I don't think I've been exposed to too much yet. Not that there's a threshold for dying to alien medicine, but the less the better, for now. Oh well, this is far easier without fur. Attempting a non-invasive puncture of the subject. Locating a vein by eye is far harder without proper scans. We'll need to schedule those during upcoming days if possible. For future note, patient's lack of fur does make it significantly easier. Ah, possible vein, possible vein on forearm. We'll attempt first try there. He stops monologuing to himself and looks to me, gently grabbing my arm with his free hand. I'll do this the best I can. I promise. I can do nothing but trust him at this point, so I just close my eyes and turn away wincing. Waiting is always the worst in, this, in these situations. Then, there it is. I can feel the needle pierce my skin. I'm still looking away, but I hope he got what he was looking for. I'd loathe to do this again. And then as soon as it started, it stopped. I slowly opened my eyes and turned back to him. He's taking a small red vial out of the device and placing it, and gently placing it on one of his pockets. As this happens, I hear the door sliding open. I guess it's lunchtime. I rub my arm with it. It's barely even sore. There, all done. I hope that wasn't too bad. It's impossible to gauge how patients will react to this kind of procedure. But you sat very still, so thank you. He stands up and moves a lot, large paw over my head before stopping himself with a blank face. Uh, Doc. You good in there? He snaps out of it and pulls his hand back, adjusting his overcoat. Y yes Of course. Uh, right. Lunch. What did you bring us? No idea what that was about. Maybe something was in my hair. Anyways, I am curious to see what these things eat. And I guess what I'll be eating. It's only now crossed my mind that dogs on Earth eat- that dogs on Earth either eat raw animals or dog food, so I'm pleasantly surprised to see plates of food that look almost recognizable. If at least by shape and color alone. I walk closer to get a better look. Bonk. Oof. <laughs> no way! Damn it. I forgot about the see-through wall stuff. Maruk, don't laugh. Are you okay? He puts a paw to my back to make sure I don't stumble over. Yeah, yeah. I gently push his paw away and approach the wall again. More carefully this time. I see now there are lines on the floor indicating where it is. As well as it's not entirely translucent base. It's smooth to the touch. Like glass. Just... Fuck you, Maruk. <laughs> Honestly, I feel like... I feel like if there are multiple routes in this game, that Maruk's route, 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 whatever... Hiya. Wait. Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah, no. I feel like... I feel like Maruk's route is just going to be like a sort of, oh, yeah, he's an asshole, but this is why, and we'll start to feel lovely towards him, like we'll start to love him. Or as him, he's just fucking lovable. He's just lovable. Yet Silken. Finally able to look outside, there isn't much to see besides lunch, besides lunch, Maruk's bench, and our lunch, which happens to be quite nicely laid out over two trays. Although, by their orientation, I'm beginning to believe only one of the trays is for me, as the other is by Maruk's bench. Guess he was really hungry, too. There seems to be some kind of soup, a salad, a bun, some crackers, some rolled-up things, and some kind of meat, maybe? Well, at least he didn't skimp on the variety. You get sus when the characters are too lovable. Oh, no. <laughs> I... I have a feeling that... He is going to be similar to, uh, to Aaron or Axel from Remember the Flowers. Like, I, I have a feeling that he's going to be like that. Because, like, he's so calm and lovable. Yeah, but then you, like, like with Aaron, like, kind of Remember the Flowers spoilers, um, 
he's so lovable, but then you find out that he was casually a terrorist. You, you find out just ever so casually that he was, and he regrets that past. And now he's all kind and lovable. And this man, I swear to God, he might have, like, developed bioweapons or something, and he regrets that, so now he's kind and lovable. I feel like that might be the case. Just looking at those, that, 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 that very huggable face. Oh. And a glass of what I can only assume is water. That's good. I was getting worried I would have to drink out of the sink again. It's also still on the other side of this confounding see-through wall, so I'm not really sure how this is going to work. Fortunately for me, Doc is already a few steps ahead of me, standing where the door should be. I can see now there are more marks on the floor where he is. Must be for that reason. Now, I'm going to go get your food. Please stay where you are, alright? Ah, right, I really am still a bit of a prisoner right now. I nod and step back a bit before Maruk messes with the device on his wrist and the wall retreats, allowing Doc to retrieve the meal for me. Or maybe for us? I doubt I can eat everything there. Or should. Fortunately, it's a short affair and Doc is back with my lunch. And my only exit closes behind him. Guess any thought of escape is a bit silly, especially with Maruk right there. I'm not really looking to be tackled and knocked out again anytime soon. We'll see if escape is even necessary. It seems like they intend to help me. Or at least study me. My stomach growls. Right, right. Food first, existential dread of being imprisoned by giant dogs later. Now that the tray is actually in the room, I've realized the food actually smells pretty good as well. Like something homemade, homemade and hearty. But with a hint of something I can't put my finger on. Not really what I was expecting. Doc sets the tray in front of me, and I'm first drawn to the crackers. It's by far the most boring option, but it seems like the safest bet that I can eat without any repercussions. Although, in truth, I have no idea. This could all just be poison waiting to kill me. Suddenly struck with fear and decision paralysis, I look to Doc for guidance. Only to find his face portrays a worryingly similar, similar expression. I guess the same idea hit him as well. I give him a few seconds before he notices me staring. Oh, um, I'm not really sure what to offer you here. I could list out their ingredients and health benefits and even their chemical composition. But I'm not sure that would help you. Let's just be cautious and take this away. He removes the meaty pate looking thing. And maybe this. And then the tray with the bun. Oh dear, maybe these two. There goes the rolls. I can tell he's trying hard to make sure nothing here will mess with me. Although in truth he has no way he has no way of knowing either way. Oh he got his water and sadness! That's what we get to eat. Water and sadness. <laughs> I'm just worried there won't be any food left I can try. <laughs> we can eat our sadness. <laughs> I'd rather be safe than sorry. But I have to eat something. Doc. Just let the pup try something. We're both a bit shocked to see Maruk standing over us leaning on the wall. He seems to be eating some kind of burger or sandwich. <laughs> Bread and water probably. Not, not, Tucker can be over here feasting on his bread and water. I will be over here feasting on his sadness. He seems to be eating, it's got foil wrapping at all. The bread looks really thick though. Wait a minute. What did he call me? Hey, I'll have you know I'm an adult. I yell, mockingly shaking my fist at him. He just scoffs and rolls his eyes. Hm. I suppose Maruk is right. Although, I can't guarantee your safety if you try anything. And I'm sorry for that. I could run some tests, but that could take days, and since we are a different species, the results might not even come back correct. So maybe just... take it slow. I frown and just nod. While I'm not really reassured this won't be my last meal, I don't see any other options. Well, besides cannibalism. But I think it's a bit early to gnaw my own leg off. Nevertheless, I still decide to start off easy. Honestly, bread is fucking delicious. I, I'll say that. Bread is fucking delicious. 
And depending on the temperature of water, it also depends on the taste of water. Like, cold water is pointy. Like, it tastes pointy. That's the best way to describe it. And hot water tastes round. I think that's the best way to describe it. Maybe too easy, in fact, as I eye up the glass of water. I really have no idea how to tell if it's just normal water or something else. The water from the sink tasted normal, but who knows? It could be corroding me from the inside as I sit here right now. As I sit here right now. If you time the bread and water ratio, you get a sweet taste. Ah. That honestly sounds epic. That thought notwithstanding, I can't think of anything on Earth that doesn't drink water. Although, whether I am still on Earth or not is another issue. Sniffing the water does nothing but draw a few strange looks from my hosts. It's, um, water. You do drink water, right? Dihydrogen monoxide? Glad to hear some things are the same around here. Once I've had a drink, I take one of the crackers and inspect it. It looks thicker than a saltine, and breaking it in half shows it's flakier and less brittle. Hmm. That's a common snack for us. It's a kind of flatbread, maybe more of a pastry, really. It's kind of just empty carbs, but sometimes that's all you need. You can also get it sweetened as a dessert. I hear it's in a lot of soldiers' rations, too. And it stays fairly well. I expect Maruk to remark about that, but I guess he's too busy eating. Even though he's still standing right next to us. Well, here goes nothing. I take a bite in my hop, and my hypothesis turns out to be correct. It's more flaky than it is brittle. Almost as if someone flattened a croissant, or maybe a few. It's really dense. Hmm. Never had that. Although the flavor leaves a lot to be desired, it's fairly bland, but with a sweet and almost herb-like aftertaste? When I don't immediately start choking, I decide to finish the one I'm holding. Maybe we should stop here? Wait until anything happens? That way, if anything does, we'll know you shouldn't eat those again? While I agree with Marrow's logic, I'm hungry now. I don't really relish the idea of only eating what is essentially bread and water for the foreseeable future. That was kind of already what I subsi subsisted on back home. I simply shake my head no and reach for the salad. He looks worried, but he doesn't stop me. Seems Maruk was right in that regard. Kind of just best getting over with it. The leaves look different than any leaf I'm used to. Well, that should go without saying. Maybe I just didn't eat enough salads back home to really determine any difference. Just, like, casually goes into a food coma. After all that, because food. I don't think that's how food comas work. While I'd like to say that's a common dish, as I always advise our crew to eat well, I find more than not that humble greens are ignored around here. That one in particular, though, does look a little barren. It barely has any dressing on it. Maruk. Which cafeteria did you go to? Oh. Oh. Yeah, I don't... I truly do not know the difference between all that. Lower decks was the closest. Did you want me to spend my pay going to another one? For this? He gestures at me. Guess this facility or station or whatever is big enough to have multiple cafeterias. Or at least one for the workers and one for the higher-ups, maybe. Well, no, I just might have to stop by and make sure that living standards are up there. Or at least the food quality. It's fine, Doc. I just didn't put a lot of dressing on since it's for them. Oh. I suppose that would be a safe assumption. Thank you. Hmm. Hmm. This is kind of thoughtful coming from him. Maybe he's not just some muscled up jerk. I should probably know the guy for more than a day before judging him. Although he did tackle me. And knock me out. Well, his job is to worry about security. And right now, my job is to try the salad. Taking the first bite is pretty disappointing. But I mean, I guess I should have expected as much. It is just a bunch of leaves with a small amount of dressing. The aftertaste has a nice kick to it, though. A decent hint of spice. All in all, I think I could make a better salad back home. Doc just seems glad I'm not choking to death or breaking out in rashes and hives. Which is fair. I'm sure he'd hate to lose a patient. 
and new species to bad food. Oh, this is one of my favorites. Mero announces as I reach for my final dish. It's a traditional northern broth. It's pretty much exclusively made with vegetables. But I've seen some variations with meat instead. This one looks fine, though. It's usually eaten during the colder seasons by farmers. But really, anyone can enjoy it year-round. The soup itself has some beautiful bronze oil floating at the top, staying just separate from the rest of the broth. A single, unidentifiable ingredient rests on the bottom of the bowl. Bringing the bowl to my lips, I'm able to really take in the warm, hearty aroma of it. I'm glad it stayed warm for so long. Upon my first sip, I'm shocked by how spicy it is for something described as just vegetable broth. Fortunately, it's not too much and I can enjoy the rest of the soup. The rest of the meal continues about the same. I slowly finish my three dishes while Doc makes small talk and Maru leers at me. Not the worst family dinner I've had. Once I've finished and put all my dishes on the tray, I yawn and sit back a bit. I just realized I really have no idea what time is, what time it is. Looking around the room to see if maybe somehow I missed a giant clock reveals nothing of the sort. At a bit of a loss, I decide I might as well try to ask. So, uh, hiya. So, uh, Doc, what time is it? Those are about the expressions I expected. I try tapping my wrist. Maybe watches exist here? Hmm? Oh no, I don't have a monitor like Maruk's. Mine is... I must have left it elsewhere. Maruk, I think they want to see your monitor. Is that okay? I'm sure they're curious. <sighs> well, it was worth a shot. But since Stock mentioned it, I might as well take this opportunity to check out his monitor, or whatever he called it. I am curious. He wasn't wrong. Yeah, I saw Doc. What should I do? I've got important information on here. Just open the lock menu at least. Fine, fine. He lowers his pot to my eye level and feigns pressing some buttons in the air. Then a projection comes out of the bracelet. Wait, did he even touch it? I wonder if I can I wonder if I can just tell where his hand is. I saw it from far away earlier, but I'm blown away by it now. This is like a real life hologram or some kind of short range projection. I can't even see any seams in it anywhere. It's like a band of pure bronze. It's even emitting light. I've got to get one. Alright, alright. That's enough gawking at my personal stuff. Doc, it's getting late. Do you know the orders for dealing with... Well... This? You got games on your monitor? What do you mean? What do you mean? What do I mean? Can I go to my quarters? Who's guarding this thing tonight? Maruk, you're the head of security. You're on security detail. I know we've never had to use these cells before, but we need them now. So please. Maruk just seems to be grum grumbling to himself. Or maybe growling is a better word for it. Guess he's stuck with me. Or rather, I'm stuck with him. I'll have some pillows and a blanket sent up. I know you're tired, but you know how important this is. Yeah, yeah, whatever, Doc. Didn't want to sleep in my own bed anyways. Marrow just sighs and turns to me. Please understand that keeping you in here is just as much for, our, for your safety as it is for ours. We just want to make sure it's safe for both of us before we can let you out. I hope the accommodations are enough. But if you need anything, you can try to ask Maruk, and he will do his best to help you. He throws a pointed side eye to Maruk, who just looks away and scoffs. When the time comes to get out, I'll make sure you can see everything there is to see around here. And get you a better room. But for now, it is getting late, and I've still got some tests to run today. I'll be back tomorrow. Thank you. With that, he turns and heads for the door. I can't see him anymore, but I can still hear him. Maruk. Are you... okay? What's that supposed to mean, Doc? Nothing. Let me know if you need anything. And the door shuts. Maruk sighs. It feels calm for a second, and only a second. He turns and punches the far wall. Damn it! I thought I was fucking done with guard duty. Promotion after promotion for this shit. I can't believe I- He turns and faces me, as if he forgot I was here. His expression is unreadable. Anger. Confusion. Disgust. Anguish? It's all hidden behind a scowl. I can't deal with you tonight. Ending the conversation before it could begin, he quickly hits an invisible button on his monitor. Its screen flashes to life before my view is cut off. 
The wall is just a wall again. No fancy doors or giant window. Once again, I'm alone. In a white room. With nothing but my thoughts. For a second, the idea of apologizing pops into my head. But for what? Maybe just an excuse to not be trapped again? I've been trapped all day. But only now does that reality creep back in. Seeping in through the black shadows and the boned white walls. The dread fact that I am, indeed, a prisoner. I have the scars to prove it. Moved by invisible strings, I shamble to the sink. Trying to calm myself down a bit by splashing some water onto my face. It works somewhat well until, after drying off, I lock eyes with the beast in the mirror. I look like shit. Two sets of bandages. No shirt. Bruises along my arms and shoulder. I want them gone. I want all of this to just suddenly fall away. I managed so well today to not fall apart. Not claw at the walls or fight my way to freedom. And yet when faced with myself, I cannot manage. With the newfound inability to look in the mirror, I try to turn away before noticing something on my cheek. There's still water shining away, dripping slowly. My eyes are red too. Oh. Damn it! I'm unsure if hitting the wall was the catalyst or not, but the tears really start coming. Managing to make it to the bed is more difficult than I'd like to admit. Almost stumbling over myself multiple times. I only hope Maruk isn't watching. Watching and laughing. Wait. Fuck him! He tackled me and knocked me out. Fuck all of this! Screaming into my now sodden pillow does nothing to assuage my mental tirade. But it's better than punching walls. I can do nothing than curl up and cry. For what has become of me. And for what I have lost. They even took my bag and phone. I can't even call my mom. Oh. Thinking about whether or not I will be able to see my friends and family again really isn't going to help me stop crying. Oh? Fine. I don't even want to be awake anymore anyways. It's doing me no good right now. The low whimpering and gasps for air make it hard to stay focused on sleeping. But eventually I manage to at least stop crying. After flipping the pillow over to the dry side and getting fully under the sad excuse for a blanket, I try to find empty thoughts to fall asleep to. My last waking thoughts are of my first day at school. End of the classes I missed. Sad. Day one. My eyes shoot open. Blurry, yet dry. Being met with pale blue light tells me nothing more than it is still night. For whatever that means around here. I feel terrible. Hot. Sweaty. Sick. I make it to the toilet as fast as I can. But what happens next, I am glad the lights are out as I empty the contents of my stomach. I guess something didn't sit right with me. And yet, I am not dead. Ugh. Oh man, is it hard to move right now? Managing to lift myself to the sink, I'm able to rinse off a bit. I don't feel any bumps on my skin or anything, and I already feel less sick. Guess it was just a bad meal. Hopefully. I still try to avoid looking in the mirror. But fortunately, it's still too dark anyways. Looking around the room, nothing seems to have changed. Not that I expected it to have. But I'm glad nothing weird was happening while I was asleep. I'm not in another weirder prison cell. Getting back in bed, I realize the sheets are disgusting. Just drenched with sweat. I'm glad I feel better now, or I'd be really worried. Pushing them to the side, I lay down. It's cold, but I have no other option. Fortunately, sleep comes easier this time. And thankfully, I don't dream. Waking up and not having to rush to the toilet is a relief. In fact, waking up at all seems like a miracle after last night. No drenched sheets or feverish chills. Although the lights are still off, and I swear I've slept a good amount. An idea comes to me, no matter how silly I have to try it. Computer. Lights on. Lights on, please? Nothing. Damn. Totally worth a try, though. That would have made this whole thing so much more tolerable if I could mess with some cool sentient AI or supercomputer or something. Hey, who knows, maybe they do have one. I've only been here like a day or two. <sighs> I still really wish I had a sense of what time it is. No windows and no ways to turn on the lights. At least not from here. I could go bang on the wall, but I don't particularly want to wake up my warden. Deciding to loaf around, I simply walk the edges of my room some more, waking up further in the process. 
after about what feels like an eternity, the lights finally switch on and I think I hear voices from the wall again. <gasps> Being less motivated to eavesdrop this time, I just wait for what's coming to me. I don't have to wait long as the door shoots open before the wall even changes and a massive saint comes bounding towards me. Oh, by the heart. Are you okay? I know I should have run should have run more tests. Let me check your temperature. Please don't be mad. I hope you are okay. He grabs my arm and puts a finger to my neck. I assume trying to take a temperature. I have to bat him away for this too for this far too early intrusion. Jeez, give me a minute. I just got up. He doesn't understand me. But he doesn't un but he doesn't understand my actions, but he does understand my actions and backs off. Oh? Oh? Love the shirt. I love the shirt. The wall finally comes down and I can see a groggy Maruk standing there as well. I, I was just looking over your wrestling footage to try to understand you better and I saw what happened. I am mortified! Are you okay? I'll try my best to make sure this never happens again. Please don't die just yet! This is all a bit much before I've even had a chance to fully wake up. He is, like... But I understand where he's coming from. I'm surprised I'm not more worried about myself right now after last night. It's been a bit hard to organize my thoughts, all things considered. Jeez, it looks like he's almost about to cry. I should really do something. I decided to just pat his arm a few times. Thank you, Merowyn. But I'm okay. I feel better already! While he can't understand me, I think he understands I said his name and he calms down a bit. I think they can kind of understand when I say their names. Maybe thank you as well. He raises his, he raises his arms and awkwardly hovers them near me for a bit before coughing into a closed fist and standing up. Was he about to... No. No, I doubt it. Um, after reviewing everything from yesterday, I brought you the simplest breakfast I could find. I'm sorry it's not much, but I think we need to go slower. Much, much slower. Right? Like... Honestly, a little surprising we didn't have him just like falling... We, we didn't see Tucker just falling to the floor and start screaming. Because... The realization that he might never see anything he knows and loves ever again. After last night, I couldn't agree more. He steps out of the door to grab something, and I move to the bench so we can have some more room. Maruk just does some morning stretches. I guess he's in his own world right now. What goes on in here only concerns him insofar as I'm not A, dead, and B, outside of myself. It, it has to. Like... Honestly... Although, I might have almost died, but I don't think the blame could have been put on him. Doc comes back with a single bowl this time, the contents of which look similar to cream of wheat or oatmeal, maybe? Can't say I'm the biggest fan, but if Doc says this will be better, I trust him. This is the simplest breakfast I can find on the ship. It has two ingredients, grains and water. Like I said, I'm sorry how painfully basic it is, but after last night, this poor guy, I feel so bad. He really is concerned over my well-being. Oh my god. God, that sounds awful. I decided to try and smile. As genuinely as I can force myself to. To hopefully make him a bit less worried. I think it works. A and I cleared my schedule so I can stay here all day. To make sure no other incidents occur. That sounds nice after last night. While these dogs may have me stuck in here, I don't know how much I want to be alone with my thoughts right now. But enough of that. I have to get some food inside me, as I've barely had anything for two days now. And most of it came back up. Taking my first bite, Doc watches with bated breath. I'm sure ready to perform some kind of Heimlich maneuver if anything happens. Fortunately, instead of being met with a poisonous death, I'm just met with a disappointing flavor. It's basically just oatmeal. Nevertheless, I finish the whole bowl as Doc watches and even takes some notes. Not sure on what, maybe things I do subconsciously like table etiquette or scratching my nose. After breakfast, Doc decides to take my vitals again quickly, and I let him. 
Better safe than sorry. He looks around in his bag before looking to the ceiling. <sighs> Rushed over so quickly. I forgot to pick something up. Ugh, it's going to be so useful. Um, you just stay right here. I have to go get this for today. Maruk takes one look at me before pulling out his monitor. <laughs> the window fades away and nothing but the wall is left. I guess he's not in the mood to even feign a conversation today. Jackass. Fortunately, while waiting for Doc, nothing happens, so I can't imagine the porridge giving me any troubles. It takes Merowin far longer than I imagined for him to get back. Not that I can tell, but it feels like almost an hour. Is this place that big that it would take that long for him to get to his office and back? I hear footsteps. Oh, I guess that explains why. I guess you got caught up. Hello there, Tucker. I've been told you understand us, is that correct? I nod. Outstanding, truly. What a peculiar phenomenon. Some sort of one-way communication. Well, I should probably introduce myself, really, then. My name is Professor Seno. Tyre Seno. Head of Particle Physics. Advanced Robotics, etc., etc., here aboard the... Icoriod 2. But you may call me Tyre. Or Chief. As I'm sure you've picked up is my moniker around here. Now then, can you tell us how you got on board this ship? Wait, do him and the Doctor have the same last name? Hold up. Hold up! Hold up! Do they? Wait, do him and the Doctor have the same last names? I wonder if they are related. They don't look it. Also, they keep saying ship like I know where I am. I've never seen anything like this before. The only place I've seen ships like this is in... Oh no. In science fiction! I'm in space, aren't I? I guess I can't really find out till I see a real window, or ask. But I should answer Tyre. I just shake my head no. Hmm, interesting. Do you know where you are? Another no. No. I thought not. We have no record of your species in any regard, so finding you under these circumstances is quite bizarre, you must understand. Well, either way, I have some news for you since you can apparently understand us. For one, we are able to return your personal belongings to you as we, as we have found no evidence that they are dangerous in any way. Although your personal data pad is being kept for research purposes, we apologize. Personal data pad? Does he mean my phone? That's fine, I guess. I probably don't have service here anyways. I believe that we may be able to reverse engineer some kind of dictionary with it. And from there, create a learning AI to teach us your language. Really? A learning AI? Aren't those only used for diplomats and such? Well, what would you call our friend here but a diplomat? Maruk just shrugs. Anyways, I believe I can figure out how to get that up and running, maybe even as early as tomorrow. The technology you possess is fortunately not too different from some of our more primitive tech. If just barely. It's quite impressive, really. If I only could, I'd make a deal with God, and I'd get him to swap our places. <laughs> and while I do wish that was all of the news I had for you, there is some bad news. While I have tried to keep all this under control, I have already been informed that there are rumors spreading about of your presence here. What? I told everyone involved how important this is. Damn it! I'm not blaming you, Maruk. No one is. I believe it was truly out of your control. I'm just warning our friend here while they are safe here for now. When they get out, things might become complicated. You might find yourself the center of attention from many prying eyes. That does not sound like something I want. At all. But I guess I'm okay as long as I'm in the cell? Gah. This is really a prisoner's dilemma. Um, my best guess on how he ended up there was... Hang on, I'll be right back. And I'm back. Sorry about that. Wait, no, that's something else. But try not to worry too much. You have my full support as well as the support of the captain herself. Now 
no way the captain cares about all of this. Ah, it might have to do with that. Like, maybe... Maybe this man right here teleported us onto here. Is this thing really worth her time? Of course she does, Maruk. It's her ship. How do you think I knew about those rumors? She also told me to take charge of, Ruck of Tucker's security personnel personally, which is why I'm now officially signing you as her permanent bodyguard. Until further notice. The room goes silent, if but for a moment. <laughs> Good one, Chief. Maruk, I'm serious. The safety of our guest is by far the most important thing right now. Well, I mean, of course, but surely I don't have to do it, right? I'm the head of security and all. That's exactly why it has to be you. You have the highest clearance. You're already informed on the situation. And you're the most qualified. The captain suggested you herself. No one moves once again. Um... Dr. Seno? Yes, sir? Didn't I schedule Maintenance Director Tiran to be here? Did you, sir? I haven't seen him. Hmm, hiding in the walls again, I bet. I'll go find him and send him down. Alright, I better be off. I've got mountains of data to sift through, and now this AI to work with. <sighs> Never a dull moment, I suppose. It was lovely meeting you, Tucker. I do hope we can actually hold a conversation soon. <laughs> Goodbye, sir. Chief takes his leave. But Maruk snaps out of it and follows. Wait! Chief, can we talk about this? Merwin and I both bask in silence for a moment before making eye contact. Okay, I actually have shit that I gotta get done, so I'm gonna leave off here tonight. Like, yeah. Honestly, I wouldn't worry about that loud noise too much. Anyways, um, stay safe, have a good night, and I will see you all tomorrow.